Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part three of the absolute basics of AutoCAD 2021. Although, hold the phone, I now have AutoCAD 2022, but so far using them, I don't really see a big difference. If there is a difference, I will tell you what that is while I'm shooting this video, okay? I want to go over things like all of the draw tools, or at least most of them. Uh, most of the modified tools and I think that will be our 10 minute mark and then in the next video we'll talk about some other things of the absolute basics of AutoCAD okay so first things first we talked about the line tool in my first video you can go to the line tool you can type line now you'll notice right now I have dynamic input turned on that's your preference do you want to have the cursors follow you around uh, and you can type you know you can click somewhere and type numbers like a 10 distance hit tab 90 enter and that would be a 90 degree angle uh, at 10 inches of a line or if you hit f12 that will turn dynamic input off and everything reverts down to the com the command bar okay that's up to you uh, but click 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 we can make a bunch of different lines here and these lines are individual segments one two three okay you can tell they are individual segments because they have three squares on them all right so now polyline click 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 escape you will notice the difference it is all one shape and it gives you where the midpoint is because a polyline and a midpoint of a polyline can be converted to an arc which you can do whatever kind of arc you're looking for okay but a, a polyline is basically just lines put together to create one shape and that one shape is already one shape that you don't have to use the join command on now I could select these here and type join and that would now make this a polyline, okay? And you'll see those little uh, rectangles in the middle rather than the squares on the ends, okay? Um, but that's up to you, what, whatever you're trying to make, okay? All right, next up is the rectangle tool. What we're going to do with that is we are going to click and then click another point. That's not the only way to draw a rectangle. You can, you know, draw a rectangle off of something that's already there. So if I wanted to do the center of this circle, I would hover over the circle edge, and then you'll see that the plus pops up and I can click right on there. Um, and then at that point I can do a random click or I can start typing some numbers. I can say what the area is. I can do the dimensions of it. I'm gonna do the dimensions on this one. Um, or I could just say what point I want it to go to. Maybe I want it to go to starting at the origin here, you know, 50 comma 50, I could do that, okay? But like I said before, if we're starting at the center here, I could do dimensions. And dimensions would be, let's say I want it to be a 10 inch enter five or by five width enter rectangle. You'll see that it wants to know which way do you want it to go starting at that point, up and to the right, up and to the left, down and to the left, down and to the right. Whichever way you want it to go, click in that direction and that's where your rectangle will go. A rectangle is a polyline. You will see that it has the uh, rectangles on the midpoints of the shape. And so is a circle. A circle is already a polyline. It's, it's technically not a line, but it's already a shape that's already closed and already one piece, okay? So maybe it's technically not a polyline, okay? But uh, it's a, we'll call it a poly shape. How about that? All right, next up is the ellipse tool. With the ellipse tool, what you're going to do is you're going to click wherever you want your center to be or type in your uh, 15 comma 15 or whatever you would like, wherever you would like to start that ellipse, it's going to ask you specify the endpoint of the axis. If I go down, this is going to be the center of of the ellipse. So if I go down, that's how that's half of how tall it's going to be. So you can see that it makes it look like a circle at first, but then when I move my cursor to the right, it wants to know and you should stay on the green line. Again, that's F10 if you don't have that. F10 turn that on. Uh, it'll want to know how wide you want the ellipse to be as well. So again, you could type numbers here. You know, if I want to go along this polar line 10, I can do so. Um, different than a circle, obviously, because it's more like an oblong circle. All right. Oblong, oblong, oblong. All right. Uh, hatch pattern. Actually, let's go polygon first. Polygon is going to ask you the number of sides. Let's say we did eight like a stop sign. I'm going to click wherever I want it to be. It's going to ask you inscribed in circle or circumscribed about a circle what that means is that if you had a circle and if you go back to your polygon tool and you do eight enter the center point could be at the circle 
inscribed in a circle means that the ends are going to hit the inside of the circle. Uh, circumscribed about a circle means that they are going to out go outside the circle and the corners are going to touch the circle. Okay, so it really doesn't matter which one you're going to do here, but you can see that now I have the size that I want. And when I click on the outside of the circle, this one is circumscribed. I will do the exact same thing with the other one, only uh, inscribed, eight, eight sides. We'll go at the center again, inscribed. By the way, I, I appreciate you guys being very patient with my uh, rustiness of AutoCAD. I haven't used it in a little while, so you know if you see me stumbling or whatever, it's because I haven't used it and I haven't shot any videos recently. All right, so thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so the difference being this is circumscribed, this one is inscribed. Uh, you can always change the size of these shapes later on. So jumping back to the rectangle, I can take this, and again, you can also convert this to arc too, just by hovering over that midpoint. I'm not clicking, I'm hovering, and then convert to arc, okay? Or add vertex, you can add another point to it, right? If I just click on this, it'll allow me to distort or just stay on the green line and slide in to change the size. Same thing here, distort, slide in. Okay, we're out, you know, whichever way you're trying to go. Um, same thing here. If I were to start moving these points around, these vertexes, you can completely change the shape of this object. You can also move entire lines at a time by grabbing the midpoints. All right, here we go. Next thing, hatch pattern. Let's say I had a shape that I want to fill in with a pattern. You go to hatch. You'll see the different hatch patterns that you can use. So you can arrow down and see a bunch of these different ones. They're named silly things like ARB816, uh, but really that looks kind of like a brick pattern. I know if you guys followed any of my other videos, like the soccer field, we used this one, the ANSI 37, as the netting. So basically you just click on that. Uh, we're going to do pattern. If we wanted to do a solid color or a gradient, we could change it, but we're going to do a pattern. Uh, we'll just click right in here and then hit enter. Okay. Now this hatch pattern, if I click back on it, it shows me that menu again. I can change the angle of let's actually, let's change the scale first. So you guys can see this a little better. Let's scale this up. doesn't matter how far, uh, but I can change the angle of the pattern itself by either typing the number or by dragging this bar left and right. And you could change the transparency and so on. Okay. So that's pretty much it. I use that on my architecture stuff when we're trying to show like the siding on a house or the foundation, you know, being concrete or whatever. Okay. There's a bunch of different hatch patterns in there and they all have their own uses. Okay. Delete. Um, let's see. Let's move into actually there is a, a line called X line, which is construction line uh, in our title block. When we draw things in my other video playlists, you'll see, let's just pretend this was my title block, which this is not the right size, but it kind of looks like my title block and that's what I'm going for. What we do is we start from a corner to corner with a line and in order to get the center of that area, we actually take a construction line or you can type X line at the bottom. I typed that wrong, but it got it anyways, nice. Uh, at the midpoint and you'll see that as you spin your cursor around, you will be able to draw that line anywhere you want. Generally, we draw horizontal and vertical, hit escape, get rid of the diagonal line. And now the reason for this is because of the next tool that I'm going to show offset. Okay. Uh, if I want to offset something that basically just means take whatever object you're selecting and make a copy of it in a specific direction at a specific distance. Okay. So let's just pretend that I wanted to offset this to the right and offset this to the left, the same distance. I could go to offset. I type my distance. I don't, I don't know what size this box is. So this might end up like a random place, but let's just say it was five. And then I go in here and I click on this line and I say, Hey, I want to offset this line and I want to go right or left. You click in the direction you want to go and then you go back to the one you want and then you go to the left. And then let's say you want it to go up and down. Same thing. So now we would get rid of these two. And if we would use a tool called fill it, which is the next one that I'm going to talk about, fill it is for rounding corners. But if you do a, a fill it, and then you go to radius, you can type in a radius of these numbers. So let's say I did a radius of five. I could go from this line to this line and create a curve that is a, a radius of five or whatever number that you type in. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this example here. Um, what else can we talk about with offset? 
if it's a line, okay? When you offset that line by five or whatever, it's only gonna do one line at a time. But if it was a polyline, and you go to offset it, since it is one shape, it will offset as one shape. Now you'll notice that it'll start changing. It's not making an exact copy here. It's actually just offsetting each line and automatically changing the way that the shape is based on the way that the line is getting smaller or larger. So if I'm gonna go this way, it's gonna make it larger and larger. A better example of that would be if I had a circle and I offset that by, let's just go by one, that's a smaller circle. This one is a bigger circle, and that's a bigger circle. Okay, it's a little bit harder to understand when you have a random shape drawn like that, but when you think about just a circle or a rectangle or anything like that, you're basically just taking that line, making a copy of it at a specific distance, making it bigger or smaller, okay? So that's important to know. Offset is very important in my class and in all my videos. Uh, we talked about fillet for a second. Here's what's pretty cool about fillet. If you, if you were back in that title block scenario, let's just say we had these lines that were five, 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 rather than trimming the ends off, which I'm going to talk about in a second, you can do fillet radius zero. And I can just do zero curve. If I hit space bar here, it brings me back in one, two, and it just makes a boxed corner. Okay. So that's very useful too. Rather than trim, trim, it's just fill it from here to here. It's a little bit faster, okay? All right, so now with the trim tool, if I go into trim, if you're in 2019, 18, 17, anything before that, you are in what's called a cutting edge trim. If you wanna be in a quick trim, you hit enter again, and that makes it so that you can just click what you don't want, which is a really nice way of trimming. If you're in 2020, don't quote me on this, I think it starts with 20, 2020, 21, 22, you're already in a quick trim and you just have to click whatever you don't want, okay? Uh, likewise, in the, those new versions, you can actually just click lines in the trim tool to erase them as well, which is pretty cool. It makes it a little bit faster rather than getting out of this tool and going to the erase tool and then erasing what you want, okay? Um, I'm still in the trim tool. Now, what is cutting edges? Let's back up a step here. A cutting edge, so if I go back to trim, and I hit cutting edges. So now in the newer versions, you have to uh, do the opposite if you wanted to, basically it starts you with the quick trim, but if you wanna do cutting edges, you have to click it at the bottom now. Whereas in the old versions, like I said, it started with cutting edges and then you'd have to hit enter to get to quick trim. So they just kind of flip flop that, which is uh, it's actually a good change because I think I use quick trim a lot more than cutting edges, all right? So anyways, think about a pair of scissors here. I have this vertical line. I wanna cut this end off and this end off. Okay, so if I go this line and this line, which are two lines you're clicking that have nothing to do with the line that you're trimming, you go ahead and hit enter, and then you click on the side of it that you don't want. So if I didn't want this side in the middle or that side or this side, it'll trim it at those points. Now, in that scenario, it would have made much more sense to do a quick trim just like we did before, but let's say that you had a bunch of offsets A quick trim would work for a, a little spot, like just clicking one or two places. But let's say I wanted to trim like, uh, let's say one, two, three, four different spaces. Rather than clicking four spaces, you'd go trim, cutting edges, line, line, enter, and then the line that you want out, and it will do all four at the same time. So it's really about time management and trying to do your drawings as quickly as possible because you don't wanna be sitting here while you're working for a company or you know, you're know you in your, your class, you're taking a test. This is all about the amount of time it takes you to do things, okay? Uh, with that being said, we're 17 minutes in, almost 18 minutes in. I wanted to keep this to 10, oh well. Um, and actually there's gonna be some trimming too, so you guys will see this at like maybe 13, 14, 15 minutes. Um, but it's a little bit longer than what I wanted, so I am going to end this video at this point. However, please tell me where you are from. I want to put you on my board, and also, 
Uh, if you guys could, please, if you like the channel, if you've learned anything here, please subscribe, like the video, share it with someone else that's in your class or someone else that's trying to learn AutoCAD, and also turn on that bell so you can see all my new videos. I am back and fully at it right now, so I'm going to start shooting videos all the time, which is good for you guys. You guys can ask me any questions you want. You can email me. You can, you can put it in the comments. You know, I really appreciate you guys watching, and we will see you in the next one. Later.